I'm here to tell you guys about telling stories at the speed of culture, which is the tagline of what we're doing. And that's why I brought out my mobile phone. Because working in social media today as a brand or as an agency, you actually have to share stories. Uh, again, I'll, I'll iterate this throughout the, the presentation. Stories at the speed of culture, meaning speed is relevant. So if speed is relevant, I need to be able to publish content even while on stage. I need to be there at that moment, live tweeting, saying, hey, I'm, I'm um, at your best, this is awesome, and share that. And because I'm doing it on stage, it becomes a lot more relevant than if I go back, bring it on my computer, do an overlay on it or something like that, and then share it. So that's what this presentation is about. Um, how can brands actually um, work with the tool to do this, but also uh, so, so it doesn't become too self-promoting, I'll talk in general terms. So, um, we have a, a call sports group globally as a client, and the challenge was that they have difficulties in social media because, um, I don't know if they'll like me saying this, but it, it's hard actually to have a product that's basically a beer in a bottle, where a lot of people actually see it as kind of like, um, yeah, a commodity. So you have, so what they do instead is they do a lot of sponsorship in uh, football and in electronic music to try to create emotional bonds with the people that have strong emotional ties to uh, that topic. And we call that a passion point. And that's relevant for what I'm about to show you guys. Um, because if you're able to tell stories at the speed of culture, you might actually have a business case as well. And what we saw by the strategy I'm about to show you guys is that they increased social engagement by 40% in each market where they introduced the system. And by system, I also mean the method. And uh, it saves them 55% of social media content. And what's important about that is that the cost actually of doing what Oreo did at Super Bowl is actually extremely high. And a lot of um, the so-called brand newsrooms out there aren't actually brand new. So what they're saying is that, oh, we have a team that's actually sitting around looking into cultural trends all of the time and publishing all of the content. That's not what's going on. What they're doing is they're highlighting small events and then they're setting in teams of maybe 12 people who can create content for that. And it's highly expensive to do it. So um, that's just an important factor. I'm not saying that it's wrong. You just have to understand that it's not necessarily that much cheaper to do it because you'll need the media spent on top of it as well. Okay, so what is it we're doing? We're actually turning brands into new tools. And we believe that if speed is relevant, then what is it you need to be fast about? And we believe that culture is the key. So we believe in structuring the social media team the same way as newsrooms actually do. And we're trying to get a collaboration on with a, a major newsroom in this regard to actually use the same method of working. Because what they're doing is they have brand journalists instead. And they have the same creative powers that they're trying to create content around cultural relevant topics going around either in the local area or in uh, a broader like, uh, global perspective. So that's the same thing that brands need to do. They just need to have uh, some, some goggles on that has a perspective of the brand's relevance as well. And passion point becomes key here because um, the first trial we actually did for the brand was we used a tool called Radio 6. And we just tried to see what are people talking about in general. And we used a bunch of different listening tools. And what we actually discovered with clients such as also BMW with uh, Callsport in this case is that if you just try to follow what people are talking about, it becomes highly irrelevant for your brand. So as an agency, you also have that like passionate way of saying, hey, maybe a lot of cats isn't like the right medium to, to, to attach a brand like Callsport or any iconic brand up to, even though it might create a lot of likes and shares, does it really increase that emotional bond you want to deliver? So, um, the, the basic answer to that was uh, no. So, we believe in something called passion points, and um, when we didn't invent that, so we probably heard it before. Um, 
passion points to us is any event, product, sponsorship, anything that the company uses to promote itself and create a bond with the, the user, we call passion point. And it's from that view that we actually try to create content all the time. So even though uh, a Miley Cyrus video is uh, trending, if you're not able to attach that to something that's brand relevant, then we don't believe it's the right message for uh, the brand to be sending. So relevance is key. Second problem is that brands have to create content at a massive scale right now. If you look at the, the, the magnitude of different platforms right now, many brands that we're talking to are on at least three to five platforms. And that's just covering like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and so forth, uh, Tumblr. So what we also saw is not only do they have a lot of different platforms, um, Facebook, for example, actually um, it, it rewards you for creating more content. So what we actually proved, I have a team of data scientists, and by a team, I mean two data scientists, who's actually sitting and crunching data for our uh, clients all the time. So they're just trying out different stuff, trying to see if they can find any correlations to different um, stats. And what they found throughout all the brands we work with is that on Facebook, we can post once. And let's say on average, you reach 5,000 people. Then the basic assumption would be, if I post twice, I would hit 10,000 people, right? So I know there's actually a dynamic effect, which means that the more you post, the more uh, reach you get uh, on top of that in dynamic effect. Meaning that even posting five times a week at a minimum, and it even uh, goes uh, beyond this, then it wouldn't be a generic model because it becomes brand dependent, shows you that it's not a problem for any brand to post five times a week. And if you, met, if you multiply that by the number of platforms out there, you have uh, a pretty big problem. So we, uh, we sat down with Crossbow and we went through the way of working. And I work with a lot of big clients, so this is a pretty generic uh, way of working. Uh, I work with IKEA, H&M, Pandora, Jewelry, Global, um, and guys like that. And pretty much everyone works on and what they do is they say, we need to find a story out there. It might be, most of the time, it's a really commercial story, so it might just be, uh, hey, uh, I want to post a picture of this bottle of beer. So that, that can be a story as well. But it might also be, hey, um, Daniel Aga might be traded from Liverpool FC to Barcelona Football Club. Hey, uh, this is really relevant because Daniel Aga is a Danish football player. We have the main sponsorship of Liverpool this might be a trending topic that we need to pick up on. Again, that's really brand relevant. Um, so you have to find a story. So you need a platform for that. You can have a team of student helpers searching the web. It's pretty time consuming. And you have to be really fast, as I, as I said before. You have to find the medium. And that's actually a really, really hard thing for most brands to do because they might have a digital asset management system or a media bank. And a lot of the agencies know this. Um, I, I would like to say that media banks are where good content goes to die. And the reason why I say that is because there's so much noise in, in a media bank that it's almost impossible to find a signal, the really good content that's relevant at that point. Because um, you have to be, really know what you're searching for, so you're not just going to find anything unless you know where it is. Uh, so you have to find a story, find uh, the picture of Daniel Acker if he's being uh, traded. And then you start creating or modifying that. You need uh, maybe a copywriter, an art director to work on it in Photoshop um, and create that. Then you need the approval flows from either legal, uh, the client, the agency, everyone involved to make sure that, okay, we all agree that this is the post going out. Then you need to publish the story. It might not be uh, that easy. Uh, you need either a system for it or you need to lock into five different platforms. Uh, if you're on Facebook, make sure that the format is the right one if you want to hit the mobile news feed as well. So this is actually not as easy as it seems. Uh, then you have to make sure you learn. You need an analytic system. Uh, maybe you need several analytic systems. Um, and that's the big
basis of what we found was the concentration flow. And when I say the basics of it, what I mean is this is horrible. Because this is actually just the same old way of working uh, as you did in the past because that's what's needed to create a piece of content. So what we said was, okay, so working with the basic premise that you have to go through this flow, can we at least make it easier and maybe cut some of the tools out? So the first thing you need to be uh, aware of when working with the client is you should probably create a content pool form instead. So say, hey, I don't want to work within your um, within your digital asset management system or the dam. I want to pull in all the content that's ever been posted in social media across every platform from the, plat uh, from the brand in the world. And what you'll see when you do that, uh, if you're able to do it, and, um, if you're not, move on. Uh, what you'll see is for Cosmos, for example, is that they have 10,000 pieces uh, of content that's been published in social media before, where we know how well it performed. We know exactly the type of response that, that it got. Was it shared a lot, commented on, uh, like, um, across different platforms, it could be retweeted and so forth. But you suddenly get all of this data that you don't have in a digital asset management system that you're able to track it on. And if you tag that content, you're able to search for it as well, then you, you have a pretty decent platform for it. And what you'll see is you'll start helping when you create a piece of content maybe uh, in your ma market, the other markets can use that piece of content as well. And as an agency, you have to figure out the pricing model that's an entirely uh, other discussion. But it's the same basic principle is why should Cosmos have 40 different agencies uh, across the globe creating basically the same pieces of content? Of course, it's really important here to, to do a bring back to the five pieces of content a week on each platform because I'm not saying that the agency shouldn't be creating uh, new and awesome content. What I'm saying is they shouldn't be creating uh, five different pieces of content in every market in the world. Maybe reuse just a bit of it. The second thing we do to set, to set up, and you'll probably do that in, in strategy work, uh, but, but we do it as, from a technical point of view, is saying, hey, we want to set up this passion point. Um, and we want to say, okay, so if Cosmos has a sponsorship of Liverpool and Arsenal, Premier League, but they also have a global sponsorship of actual uh, electronic musician, uh, we want to create a passion uh, grab around that and then listen to web, not in terms of how many mentions are going on uh, and do nice charts of it like most other people do. What we're saying is, are there any articles, memes, or whatever? that are trending around that passion point. Because that's what's relevant. Uh, it's relevant. Where is actual playing tomorrow now? What, um, it is the lack of being traded. Um, should the, the Danish soccer player make his bench out of the um, bench for Arsenal properly? So those are things that you need to be able to discuss with, uh, with the users instead of just having this commercial post. And most of you probably know that talking with brands, even though they have a sponsorship of something, they're definitely not experts in that, uh, in that topic. A lot of the time, honestly, the people who are managing the brands are really skilled, but they're looking at uh, a bunch of uh, different analysis to see, okay, so we should do sponsorships in this, but this, that doesn't mean that they love electronic music or uh, big fans of Liverpool. So you need to be able to listen to the web. So what I'm about to show you now is actually based on the premises I just uh, went through with you guys. We built a system for the brand. And it's been uh, pr pretty successful as you saw with the business case. And the first thing we do is we say, okay, so you needed to find the trend. And you needed to uh, to see it somehow. You needed to bring it out to the different markets and to the brand usually. And it looks like this. When they log in, what they see at the top, the four stories at the top, uh, which is kind of blurred out here, but I'll explain it. What you see there is the trending stories around their passion points right now. So the same way as uh, a, a 
news outlet logs in and reads Mashable, TechCrunch, New York Times to try to find articles to inspire them to share. The same thing goes on here. So they log in and they have these passion points and they're saying, hey, what's going on around Arsenal and Liverpool or uh, street art, which is a, a new passion point of uh, Paul's they don't, they don't know what's going on right now with Banksy in New York, but now they do and they're able to share that uh, really fast and be relevant that way. And suddenly they become subject matter experts, even though they might not really uh, be it when you uh, look behind the tool. So they log into the system and it updates a few times a day and they're able to say, hey, I didn't want to have that story, I just wanted a new one, and they just get a new, uh, a new story until they basically share it. So, what that helps them with is that usually you would have to have maybe four student helpers uh, traversing the internet trying to find these uh, instead of letting machines do what they do best and then letting agencies or creative people do what they do best, which I believe is an art and copy. So, we're not trying to take that out of the equation. What we're just saying is that no human being can be as effective as a tool can when it comes to finding these stories. Then you need to find the medium. And this is actually, I, I think it's really, really clever. <laughs> uh, it, it's being used a lot. Is that what it does is it says, okay, so I found this story about Daniel Lack of my trip to, uh, to Barcelona. <coughs> and I, not, now I need to combine that with a piece of content that I have. Because what it does automatically is it pulls in the photo from the article, but uh, most of the time that photo doesn't adhere to brand guidelines. So what we do is we, we find out what passion point it is, and then find a piece of content that's performed well somewhere in the world around that passion point that is owned by Paulsburg. And it, looks like, uh, it could look like this. So it's able to see, okay, so it's a soccer theme, I want to combine it with that. It might have shown a picture of Daniel Acker's fist with, um, yes, you'll never walk alone with tattoos on his hand. But the, the important factor here is that just that if you can make the connection between the inspired uh, post that you just found and a piece of content you own and adhere to brand guidelines, then you have definitely just saved at least 50% of your time. And we see it time and time again that this isn't about neglecting what uh, agencies should do or brands if they have internal brand newsrooms. We're just trying to say uh, the clients shouldn't spend all their money on you guys researching these things. They should be uh, paying you to create truly unique and great content. So sometimes you'll find a story there where actually it, it's funny with the Force and Golden Force. I wish I would have known because. Um, Tupor, which is a brand under Callsport Group, actually took that community and they put together two Callsport trucks and then they took uh, two bottles of beer and they did a split between the trucks. And it's one of the most shared uh, pieces of content in Tupor. And that was from Tupor Denmark and it immediately spread across the different markets uh, because the meme really reacted really well. They had a distribution system through here that was able to publish it directly into the market saying, we have a great piece of content trending in another market right now. Maybe you want to share that as well. And um, then you come to the create a modified part. And this is where we kind of, uh, yeah, yeah, we kind of interrupt with the, the basic VGC model. CWA isn't always as happy about this, but we also integrated live photo editing into the system. And that's because most of the stuff that's being done right now in the graphical parts are really just inserting the logo or inserting the hashtag. And honestly, again, as an agency, what we're just trying to say is you shouldn't be paying us to do that because it's really expensive and each piece of content can run you up like uh, 500,000 uh, euros just because Obviously, you had to have uh, someone insert that logo and do it in Photoshop and then change the format and share it with someone within your organization that could post it to Facebook. So we integrated live photo editing. And what's important here is, again, that it also helps to adhere to brand guidelines. 
most major brands out there have a major problem that the local market sometimes tend to ignore some of the brand guidelines. But within our system, it's actually impossible to break it. So you can take the photo out and create your own piece of content, obviously. But if you use our system for it, all of the fonts have been pre-approved. All of the logos have been pre-approved. Uh, you can even insert it so that the logo has to be like five millimeters from the bottom because the brand logo says that. So you, within here, you, you just choose the story. You can just insert the hashtag you want to promote at that point, and then you're ready to share it to, to uh, any, uh, any platform. And the, the really important thing about the hashtags here is that you're, you're, you found a new story, combining it with the old piece of content, and the hashtag gives it the cultural meaning, the relevance right now. So um, it might be Team Spirit, it might have been Epic Split, it might have been any sort of hashtag, but that's how you take an old piece of content and give it new relevance. So we, w what we see here is actually a major problem as well, which we identified, which is, if you have a client out of Sweden, for example, and you create a piece of content, you post it to social media, then let's say they have a tool that enabled them to use it in another market as well. Most brands don't, but if you did, you would have ruined the picture. Because you just wrote Team Spirit all across it, and that hashtag is going to be out of fashion in about 15 minutes, because as I was talking about early on, when speed is relevant, it's because uh, stories actually um, die, and they die really fast. When you look at uh, Google Trends, Twitter Trends, they're only there for like half an hour at a time, uh, unless you're talking about a revolution. And a, a funny story about that is actually that a, a, goal, a guy called Paul Virilio actually talked about at a point where uh, just at the tipping point of a revolution was about to start uh, out of uh, Iran, the story actually died in social media the first time around because Michael Jackson died. And the story was over. And that shows just how fickle a trend can be that a revolution can be killed by the fact that a pop icon dies. It takes it out of the, the trending topics. I'm not going to go through that because that's just some sales stuff about user management. Um, many people don't realize how much formatting actually takes place for every platform and how much you need to understand about. Uh, you can use a GIF on Facebook and most other platforms, but on Tumblr it's uh, basically the, the format of choice. And if you're, uh, you don't want to be posting filtered content from Instagram to Facebook, and you have to have that understanding. And the system can actually automatically detect most of that, and especially in the publishing flow, make sure that the, the picture is resized to fit a mobile news feed instead of what Facebook does, which is basically just cut the corner sometimes, and you have a ruined piece of content. And when you're ready to publish the story, you can publish it, or you can schedule it, and we have calendars and stuff like that, and a lot of planning tools. But that, that's not why I was center to talk to you guys about the basic features. What's really important here is just to try to understand, for you guys to understand the flow that you're going through and just optimize that. And to make sure that you're reusing content for time when relevant and spending your time on what's really important. I, I, I truly believe that by, by adopting this uh, workflow, you might be losing some money on some of the clients that's paying you like a thousand euros a post right now. But if you get ahead of that and help them build brand new streams, you also uh, become a trusted partner with them. You help them create something that's really important in terms of their business strategy going forward. And you become that trusted partner. And you say, hey, I may, I may take a loss right now, but if I help integrate this uh, into this workflow uh, throughout the world, there's a lot more to be gained. This is actually a really simple slide, but I'm actually I, I'm going to try to tell you some of the, 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 the hard parts about this, which is that call is actually machine learning. So I don't know if you read the book called The Signal of the Noise by Nate Silver, where he introduces uh, Nate, Nate Silver was a guy who uh, 
uh, predicted the American election by guessing 49 of 50 states right. And the way he did it was he said he understood that he needed to use something called uh, Bayesian inference. What that basically means is that you have a set of hypotheses and then you try that out. Uh, and you create a prior out of that. And then once you get the result, you use the result to make your machine better. So that, that's the basic principles of what you taught. And our system does pretty much the same thing. So if you use a story and um, the people turn out to really get engaged around that, the machine learns that, okay, so maybe I should put a stronger emphasis on finding stories like that in the future. And again, so if you, use, if you lose people within the organization, you still have a tool that's actually learning from the responses it's getting back to you. It has that feedback loop. And it's really important uh, for organizations to start working in flows like that and to have systems where um, they don't own the IP for this and we're selling to a lot of different clients right now, but they have the input to actually change it and adopt it throughout the, the organization. And I think we'll see that coming a lot more when agencies start building platforms for, um, for the clients to help their business uh, strategy and workflow. It's, uh, it's actually called Maki out in the, the real world, but I'm, I was here to present it on um, uh, with Osberg, unfortunately, uh, the guy wasn't able to make it today and was supposed to present it with me. So, it's called Maki and we're integrating it on a lot of different brands right now. These are the ones we're allowed to talk about. And we see the same basic principles for each market we uh, enter into, which is you increase engagement at low cost. And I think that's really important. And it, it, this isn't just about the tools. That's really important when you say it's more about the workflow of if you take uh, uh, speed and you take something that's culturally relevant and start telling stories at the speed of culture, you're actually able to create a lot better content and a lot higher engagement for the brands you're working with. And you'll be ahead of the curve when uh, social media really starts to take over, because I don't think it has yet. You can reach me here or contact me on LinkedIn if you have any questions uh, regarding this. I'll be happy to, to enter into a conversation. And that was, uh, that was the presentation.